Welcome to another Meeples and Milkshakes Board Game Cafe unboxing video. I'm Jim. We have about six boxes to unbox today. Let's get right to it. First up, we have a restock of Hues and Cues, a guessing game of colors and clues by Scott Brady. The second time we had it in. Since we had it in, we've seen there's been a big reaction to this game online and a lot of interest in it. And uh, it looks like a pretty cool game, actually. A uh, party game where you're giving people clues um, about objects to help them guess what color it is that uh, you're trying to get them to guess. Um, pretty interesting game, very unique uh, theme and uh, interesting mechanics and uh, wanted to get some more in for you guys. So there it is, using cues. We had also run out of stock of Targi, which is a great two-player game, which I'm proud to say I've finally gotten to play uh, in the last month for the first time. Uh, scratch that one off the list and uh, yeah this game definitely lives up to the hype it's a really nice um, medium weight uh, two-player game uh, a lot of fun um, and you're there's all kinds of different ways to get points in this game you are placing these uh, workers not the gray one uh, but you're placing your the two different colors of meeples on the board where they intersect is where you can uh, get the rewards uh, from those spots and uh, you're trying to get those resources to get the be able to buy cards that you've collected and it's just a really neat game so set collection worker placement game as it says there lots of strategy and not very much luck so that is Targi. Dune also now restocked we brought in uh, only one I think of this before one or two and they were they're gone so decided to bring it back in popular game uh, plays two to six players in 120 plus minutes I would definitely err on the plus side especially if you're playing with uh, a lot of players it is a game of conquest diplomacy and betrayal that is definitely an accurate description of this game and uh, this is a remake of a game a 40 year old board game in fact that allows you to recreate the incredible world of Frank Herbert's Dune uh, it is, a, as it says, a game of conquest, diplomacy, and de portrayal. Um, diplomacy is f uh, heavily featured in this game, but so is area control and uh, other, other good things like that. I definitely recommend this if that type of mechanic appeals to you and your gaming group. Now for something completely different, BB and Tina, a four puzzle box, 100 and 100, 150 and 150 piece puzzles, and... Uh, this would definitely appeal to kids. Uh, puzzles by Schmidt, and it comes in a really cool, like, lunchbox type of case, which I was not expecting, but that's a neat uh, touch they've done for the kids. So you could, you could even uh, carry these with you on vacation or something like that. Very nice. BB and Tina. And once again, we have Restocked Horrified, which is a very, very good cooperative game for one to five players, ages 10 and up in which you are trying to survive against a uh, group of Universal Studios classic uh, monster movie monsters. Uh, this game um, is getting a lot more attention lately the more people play it. I think a lot of people maybe um, uh, just didn't pay much attention to it because it was, you know, movie license type of thing and, and the kind of old, old uh, characters. But as people are, more people are playing this, they're realizing it's actually a really good game. And uh, the nice thing is it scales well for the number of players and it scales in difficulty as well. That's a good combination. Uh, it's also a very simple game to learn. So you could even call this a gateway uh, cooperative game. But I know people who are playing this who are well past the gateway stage and they just enjoy playing this over and over again. So that is horrified. Feast your eyes on this, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Keyforge, Mass Mutation, the fourth uh, set of Keyforge, and I dare to venture to guess the best by far. Uh, Mass Mutation, oh my goodness. Okay, so this is the two player starter set. Includes two unique Archon decks. It also, uh, I believe, uh, includes Yep, yeah, two play mats uh, and the rule book, obviously, all the tokens you're going to need to play this game, 
which is great. And so uh, the, for the value, this is actually awesome because if you were to buy two decks, you know, you'd only be a couple dollars short of buying one of these. And this includes the play mats, the tokens, all that stuff. Uh, definitely, if you're getting into this, you know, just buy one of these instead of, you know, dipping into one deck or two decks, just get this. You'll want all those tokens. I mean, you can substitute pennies and other tokens from other games if you want to play this and you just get one deck. And maybe you, have, you play with somebody who has decks. But uh, otherwise, this is the way to go for sure. If you're unfamiliar with Keyforge, it is a uh, card game that is invented by uh, Richard Garfield, who's famous for um, uh, Magic the Gathering, uh, King of Tokyo. Oh my goodness, so many games, including the uh, new one, Half Truth. Um, this, the neat thing about this game is that, so you have a deck of cards. Every deck that you will ever find in this game is unique. It is procedurally generated by an algorithm, and the algorithm is designed to understand all the synergies between cards and designing you a deck of cards that actually makes sense and can do some cool combos and stuff like that. There are uh, seven houses in Keyforge, seven houses of uh, cards, and um, in each deck you will have three of those seven houses. You'll have 12 uh, cards from each house. Uh, this is an awesome, awesome game, and uh, I definitely recommend you try it out. Now is the best time ever to try out Keyforge if you haven't already, because uh, this new set is here. So that's Keyforge Mass, Mass Mutation. First up, we've got a couple puzzles, kids puzzles, 150 piece and 100 piece. I think we've had this one before, maybe at, in our initial shipment of puzzles. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that one's neat. It's got a couple uh, dragon and a bird and, oh yeah, raccoon, another little dragon. That's cute. So there you go. Ages uh, six and plus, seven plus for those. And we have some restocks. We have a restock of the Jurassic Park edition of Unmatched. This is a two-player uh, version. You could uh, play with these characters on other maps from other versions of Unmatched, but in this version it comes with a map for two players. You play either as Ingen or the Raptors. Uh, this is a really great uh, tactical card game and uh, definitely recommend you try this out. As I've said other times I've unboxed stuff from Unmatched. It is a recreation by Restoration Games of the 2002 classic uh, Star Wars Epic Duel. Uh, and they have realized that, uh, as I'm sure a lot of people did over the years, that it would be really fun to play that game with characters from lots of different um, movies and and different, um, you know, things. The initial one came with, like, uh, Alice from Alice in Wonderland and, and King Arthur, um, things like that. So there's the sky's the limit for this game. And, uh, yeah, this is a really good way to get into that game. You can play just from here. So that's Unmatched Jurassic Park, Ingen versus Raptors. Another restock, we brought in a bunch more copies of Llama because this keeps on selling out. This is the Spiel de Jahr nominated game from last year that is for ages, I think, eight and up or so. Uh, but I know adults that enjoy playing this game. It's uh, by Reiner Knizia, who has made countless awesome games and I have friends in town that swear by this, and uh, definitely uh, a great game for uh, families to play with their kids. It plays two to six players, and uh, there it is. A little bit more in stock because we we're sold out again. Now we have a new game, at least new for us. It's definitely not a new game, but it is a great game. It is called Wizard. This is a trick-taking game. I've played this a few times and always, always enjoyed it. Uh, and it says here, in the ultimate game of Trump, winning tricks is the easy part. The real challenge is predicting how many tricks you'll take. To score points, players must win by the exact number of tricks they bid. Winning too many or too few means losing points. Each round adds more cards and more excitement as you try to follow your opponents. So, in this, at the beginning of each round, you're going to guess how many tricks you're going to win. And so then you're going to be trying your best to actually win that many. You will purposely lose some tricks if you if you think you've got a lot of other strong, strong cards that are probably going to win, or you'll 
you'll try really hard to, to win late if you're behind and, and, uh, and get up to that number. Uh, it's a fantastic game and some people really, really excel at it. I think it's a game where the more you play it, the better intuition you have for it. Uh, it plays large groups of people. Uh, let's see, what does it say on the box? I have played it with a lot of people. I don't know if there is a limit, honestly. Well, it says three to six players. I think I've played it with more people, honestly, but uh, it's a great game at six players. I know I've played it at six. Uh, a lot of fun. I mean, it, it's cool. It uses mostly just regular cards. They're not exactly regular cards, but uh, yeah, 60 card deck. Definitely give this a try. This one is a really fun game. Next up, we have some special ordered Star Wars X-Wing decks. We have the Scum and Villainy damage deck and the Galactic Republic damage deck. Uh, these we've been waiting for for a while, so the fellow who ordered these is going to be happy that they're finally here. Uh, they had been sold out at Fancy Flight, and it took them a while for, to get their reprint over. So there it is. Next up, some more Root expansions. We unboxed the uh, Clockwork and Underground expansions in our last video. Here we have the Vagabond pack, which has some custom... Uh, meeples for playing with the Vagabond. There's different um, personalities for the Vagabond and they, normally you just play with a generic Vagabond uh, meeple but your character has a special card for each personality. Now you can actually have the corresponding meeple for your personality which is lots of fun. And uh, yeah so there's seven wooden meeples and three bag Vagabond cards. You do need, of course, Root to play with these. Although, maybe you just like the meeples and you want to put them on your shelf. I won't blame you. Next up, we have the Exiles and Partisans deck for Root. Add a twist to Root by swapping in the Exiles and Partisan deck. Make the people hold your rule with soup kitchens. Destroy others' crafted cards with saboteurs. Copy faction abilities with cards like Airy Imagery. Im I can't say that word. That's a that's a cool word, though. I can't say it. 54-card deck and also requires root. Art by Kyle Farron, as you can tell. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so more things to spice up root, which is always a good thing. Everdell is one of the most popular games that we have uh, at the meeples.ca store. Um, and these expansions are very popular. They're brand new, and uh, we, when we first uh, got it in, they went immediately. And so now we're bringing in a few copies of each because uh, we know we've sold so many copies of Everdell and people are going to want these expansions for sure. So you can see the cool things that they add on to the already beautiful game Everdell, which we have up on our Wallow Games right there. And uh, yeah, so more more things well those are both spire crests i kind of botched that one here's uh belfair the other expansion there it is they continue the tradition of having amazing art and components for these um for everdell with these expansions here we have deluxe archon decks so if you do have you know previous editions of key forge and you just would like to get uh, a new deck mass mutation deck and have all the tokens you can buy one of these deluxe decks this contains a random well unique deck and also includes all the tokens that you need to play uh, the game so uh, there are new tokens uh, between the the first set and uh, mass mutation so this would help you catch up on all the tokens and give you some extra amber and damage tokens and things like that uh, so these are sort of, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember the price on these. I think these are something like $16.99 or something, whereas the regular decks are, I think, $11.33. I think this two-player starter decks are, are in or around $25 or $25.50. So uh, if you just want one uh, deck with some tokens, you can buy one of these and then, you know, just keep, keep buying the single decks after that if you're already into the game. So... There we go. Key Forge Mass Mutation Deluxe Archon Decks. Another restock copy of Targi, which we talked about earlier. We uh, sold out of Through the Ages, A New Story of Civilization. So here's a restock of that. This is the two to four player classic. And when I say classic, it's not like a classic like Scrabble or Monopoly, but it's a classic in the sense that it's been around for a while. 
and it was uh, number one on Board Game Geek for a long time, and for good reason. It's an amazingly good game. I'm um, very happy to have played this before and look forward to playing it again at a table with people once that's safe to do. There was a game called Through the Ages, A Story of Civilization. This is the second edition. That's a new story of civilization. We also have the original version if you prefer that for some reason, although I think most people prefer this version, this uh, civilization game. Uh, it's a card-driven civilization game, and it is excellent. Finally, we have two more copies of Othello. This game was impossible to get in North America for a while. It was just strangely out of stock. We brought two copies in uh, maybe a month ago or so, and they both sold out within a week. And um, so we decided to bring more in, of course. Uh, of the classic games, this one is actually one of my favorites, and uh, I had one of these when I was a kid. I no longer have my own copy, unfortunately, uh, but uh, now you can get your own at meeples.ca. You can tell this is a high-quality version of uh, Othello. Definitely a good game and one worth learning if you never got to play it growing up, or if you're still growing up and you want uh, a try out a classic game, give Othello a try. Now, the last of the root accessories. These are resin clearing markers. Boy, are those look nice. Those are much nicer and, and beefier than I was expecting from the pictures I saw. Really nice. So there are 12 resin clearing markers. So you play, uh, if you're playing, for example, on the winter map, uh, where the uh, clearing markers can be placed randomly, or even if you're just playing on the regular maps where there are fixed locations for them, but you want to change things up so you, you could use uh, these uh, markers instead of the ones printed on the board or not printed on the board in the case of the winter map as I said and yeah it's just really nice uh, accessories these are look really 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 good so there we go now available on meeples.ca Galaxy Trucker is a game by Vlada Chavatil who did Through the Ages which we talked about a minute ago he did Code Names and so many other awesome games this game's been out for a long time, and it's just sort of weird that uh, actually, there you go, 2008 award-winning game. It just sort of felt weird that we didn't have this, uh, and we have been asked about it in the past, um, and I thought, well, we should bring it in. It's a really fun game. It's a real-time game when you're, you're trying to build your spaceship, and then you're going to be attacked by aliens, and you need to try to have your ship properly uh, armored and defended so that it doesn't just be destroyed uh, and you're just trying to make to uh, make it out alive basically uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun it's a fun real-time game it's going to be a big pile of components in the middle of the table and everybody's uh, scrounging through the pile trying to get the stuff they need for their ship uh, it is uh, a lot of fun another game we sold out of role player and we do have some expansions left in stock. Uh, so if you're interested in role player, we have the base game again at meeples.ca. And we have uh, two of the expansions, at least two of the, yeah, two expansions. Uh, Monsters and Minions, I think it's called, the Fiends and Familiars. So there we go. This is a fun game in which you're actually uh, trying to, the, the whole game is creating a character for a role playing game, basically. And you're, you know, rolling dice and, and uh, getting different abilities for your character and building up your effectively your character sheet uh, for uh, your player. And uh, that is the game and it is a lot of fun. Ah uh, yes, shut the box. This is a, a special order and uh, you may have played this in the past. I know I've played it before, but I don't remember honestly how it works. I just remember it being a lot of fun. Uh, we had a request to bring this in for somebody, and here it is. Shut the Box from Gibson, who also make puzzles. Next up, ooh, I like the cover on this. Doctor Strange Hero Pack for Marvel Champions. A couple of these are special ordered for people who uh, play the game and uh, want to have all the packs. And we'll have a few of them in stock. There it is, Marvel Champions Hero Pack for Doctor Strange includes... 60 cards with a 40 card Doctor Strange deck, 24 new cards that can be added to any other hero deck, and a nemesis set featuring the malicious Baron Mordo. Very cool. So if you're into Marvel Champions, or if 
maybe this would make you be into Marvel Champions, you should definitely check this one out. Marvel Champions is an amazingly good, uh, very easy to learn, uh, cooperative living card game by Fancy Flight Games. Here we are. This is the Mass Mutation display deck for regular decks. Regular Mass Mutation Archon decks. There you go. Set up, ready to sell on meeples.ca. This is what a regular deck looks like. Contains 37 cards, uh, 12 from each of three houses and your unique Archon deck. And uh, there it is. Mass Mutation, finally in stock. We waited a while for this because of the pandemic and uh, the release was pushed back, but now it's finally out. Have a restock of Santa Monica, which I will actually just admit here right on the video has not been selling like I expected. And that actually surprises me and makes me very sad because we have played this game and we absolutely love it. I don't know if people aren't getting gripped by the art. I, I do think the back of the box doesn't do a great job of selling the game. Um, I definitely would recommend you watch the video that teaches how to play it. Uh, and I think you'll become as smitten with it as uh, we are. We absolutely love this game. We think it's one of the best games to come out this year. And uh, we recommend that you uh, look into this and uh, maybe try, uh, try it out for yourself. It is a pretty affordable game, and uh, this is a game that has a lot of repay, replay value and uh, scales perfectly from two to four players. So uh, Santa Monica is definitely worth your attention, and uh, give it a try. We sold out of Pipeline, I think, a week ago, uh, and uh, here we have a restock of Pipeline. This is a fairly heavy game, I'd say, you know, sort of, um, I'd say a little medium heavy to heavy uh, worker, was it worker? It's not really worker placement. I, I'm not sure that's the right way. It's an economic simulation game really is what it is. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. It's got this spatial uh, part of the game where you're trying to line up all of the pipes. Uh, and there's a lot of other good things in this. I have played it before. It's been a while, so I can't do the best job explaining. But it does have art by Eno Tool, uh, which is always nice. And um, Capstone Games is putting out a lot of great games these days. So give pipeline a try and a couple more restocks these ones from pandasaurus games godspeed uh for some one of the most some the most anticipated game of the year i am looking forward to trying this myself the one thing i can say about this game is this box is heavy it is full of components there you can see the component list there there's a lot of stuff in this box it is a mid-weight worker placement game of extraterrestrials colonization for two to five players with a 60 to 90 minute playtime. The art is absolutely gorgeous in this game. And uh, so well done, Jesse Riggle, the artist in this game. Game designed by Adam Hill and Clayton Hargrave. So, uh, oh, and development by Jonathan Gilmore, well-known uh, person in the industry. So yeah, definitely Godspeed is getting talked about a lot right now. And we're glad that we were able to bring another copy in. Finally, Sonora, which I think we were sold out of. We might have had one copy left, but I don't think so. I think we sold out of it. This is the world's first flick and write game. And so when they say flick and write, it's like, I think, roll and write game. Uh, but instead of uh, rolling dice, you are flicking these little discs. It is a dexterity game, but it also has, everybody has their own score pad and you're keeping track of your progress there. And uh, so they say this is delectably fun where cunning and dexterity meet. I'd say that's a pretty good description. Uh, it plays in 30 to 45 minutes for one to four players. There we go, Sonora by Pandasaurus. Ooh. All right, one puzzle rises among the rest. This is the Zelda collector's puzzle. Oh, a little bit of box damage there, so that's uh, going to have to be discounted. 550 piece puzzle. Looks like a map of Hyrule. Very nice looking, and if you're interested in Zelda like we are, then you might really enjoy this puzzle. That's the apparently the size of the pieces. It's going to be an 18 by 24 inch puzzle when it's all put together. Uh, and um, I mean, I don't know, the box doesn't really matter on a puzzle too much, of course, because you're going to finish the puzzle, and there you go. But anyway, it will be discounted because it's 
obviously damaged. So there we go, uh, Legend of Zelda Collector's Puzzle. I'm excited about this one. This is Thanos Rising. Uh, the fate of the universe is in your hands, a two to four player game. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is a cooperative game. And uh, so it says, Thanos is ready to enact his master plan. It's up to you, the, the greatest heroes in the universe, to assemble, working together like never before. In this cooperative game, players must build teams of heroes to face off against Thanos and his villainous allies, attempting to thwart him before he collects all six Infinity Stones to power the Infinity Gauntlet and wreak havoc on the very fabric of reality. Uh, this game has been getting a lot of uh, good... Um, a lot of good reviews, uh, and some people are saying they really, really love this game. And there's also some other uh, games coming out in the Rising uh, series. There's also a Star Wars Rising game, which is unavailable in North America, sadly, due to licensing reasons only. Uh, but Thanos Rising is available, so, uh, you know, it's a very similar system. So if you're interested in Avengers and, and all of that, then... This might be a really cool uh, cooperative game for you. Brought in some more classic games. So here is Blockus, which you may have played before. Uh, we have and love this game. Uh, this game, you were playing these different Tetromino tiles, starting from your corner, and you're trying to basically, it's an area control game, you're trying to block everybody else so that they cannot... Um, uh, cover uh, the entire board with their pieces. You don't want them to be able to play all of their pieces. You want to uh, be a, basically eliminate players by blocking all of their paths. When you play the pieces, you have to place them so that the corners are touching like this. You can't have uh, pieces um, of your own color where the sides are touching each other, but you can, as you can see, put uh, pieces uh, adjacent to each other if they're from opposing colors. So this is a really, really good classic game and one that uh, we've been playing for many years. Uh, we do have a copy for the Board Game Cafe library as well. So that's Blockus, now available. Here's another one of those Zelda puzzles. A couple of restocks of A Fake Artist Goes to New York. This is a party game. Comes with a bunch of different colored pens and a pad of paper. And uh, one person among you does not know what word everybody is trying to draw a picture of. Everybody else knows. So you're going to take turns contributing to the uh, art by drawing one line. And then you pass off the paper to the next person beside you and they add another line. And uh, you're going to be identified by the color of your pen strokes on the paper. And by the end, uh, you're trying to figure out which player didn't actually know what you were trying to draw. Uh, so you have to be careful when you're drawing. If you do know the word, you don't want to make your contributions, uh, make it super clear early on so that you can try to out the fake artist. This is a really, really fun party game. And it comes in a tiny box, so it travels well. You can take it to a bar or a restaurant or whatever. Take it with you on vacation. Lots of fun to play. It teaches in only a couple minutes. Uh, definitely highly recommend this game. Oh, All right, Zombie Dice. So Zombie Dice is a really fun uh, dice chucking game. You're going to throw dice in the cup and chuck them. And you're trying to uh, get the most points. Um, there's brains, which you want. You don't want to get shot. Uh, and uh, you are the zombie in this game, actually, if I remember correctly. I've, I haven't played this in a couple years, but we've had this game in the house for, God, at least a decade. Played it so many times. It's a really, really fun uh, gateway dice game. Like it says, plays in minutes, and uh, really, really good game. So that's a Steve Jackson game, Zombie Dice. Next up, we have the... I think this is the uh, Not Safe for Work edition uh, of Anomia which uh, is a party game, and uh, this one is, uh, yeah, definitely NSFW. So uh, I have played Anomia, but it's been a long time. Let's see what it says here. Anomia is simple. Players flip category cards until the symbols on the two players' cards match. Matching players race to give an example of the category on their opponent's card. Uh, sounds easy, right? Think again. Wild cards create unexpected matches and even losing a card can set off a chain of cascading face-offs. So right now, I, I'm it's all coming back to me. This is a really good party game. I know my daughter especially loves this one. I don't know if she's played the NSFW version, uh, but uh, she's definitely played the family version. 
Uh, it's a great game. We'll have the family version in the library for sure. Not sure about this one, but uh, maybe this one uh, is more for you. Anomia X. Oh, and here we have the family edition of Anomia, where common knowledge becomes uncommonly fun. So there you go. Think, shout, and laugh. Uh, this is a very popular um, party game. There it is. I think this is the first time we've had it in stock here. Oh, yes. There we are. Bananagrams. We were sold out of Bananagrams. Uh, and uh, we had bought some copies a while back. And we were supposed to keep one or two for the cafe. And we ended up even selling those. Because uh, the cafe hadn't opened yet. And people wanted them. But here we are. We have four more in stock. Bananagrams, of course, the uh, speed game that's kind of Scrabble-like. You're going to have a big pile of these uh, Scrabble-like tiles on the table, and you're going to form words with them, and uh, you want to uh, make as many words as you can. Unlike Scrabble, you can actually rearrange the words on your board after you've on your, your little area of the table, even after you put them down. This is an amazingly good uh, party word game, and uh, if you're fast at making words, you're going to love this for sure. Bananagrams. My first Bananagrams, which is uh, a green banana for the younger bunch. I like that. The perfect first word game for preschoolers and early readers. Uh, my first Bananagrams utilizes lowercase letters and word building combo letter tiles to help nurture your child's love for word play and word games. With multiple activities and mini games, they'll enjoy a play progression towards the original Bananagrams experience. Uh, I didn't even know this existed until I went to restock Bananagrams and I saw this and I thought, wow, that's an amazingly good idea. Uh, so we have this in as well to support uh, the younger ones among us. Finally, Steampunk Rally is a game by Roxley that I have never played, uh, but I was recently told by somebody that's uh, unfortunate I should play this game and I should also stock it and uh, it was available and uh, here it is. This box includes 108 dice, and uh, it includes a unique dice placement and card drafting mechanics. Mechanics, I love uh, both dice placement and card drafting mechanics. And so I do think this is a game I would really, really enjoy. And let's see, what does it say for player count? Do we see the player count? There it is, two to eight players, oh my goodness. So, I like it even more. I'm so glad this was recommended to me to bring in um, Steampunk Rally by Oren Bishop. This is a special box. This is a little bit... I mean, it has games in it. But, as I'll explain in a second, this is a different type of shipment. This is a shipment from Czech Games Edition, who make code names and other awesome games like that. Now, what Czech Games has done for not just us, but many, many retailers all over the place is come up with this um, promo pack of games. And they, all we had to do was fill in a form on their website. And as a thank you for sticking it through and continuing to uh, be a game store during a uh, terrible time in history they have sent us all of these games for free so uh, this is awesome because some of these games we have at the store already but we didn't have in the cafe and now we'll have some of these games in the cafe as well uh, that we're missing from our library so uh, special thank you to check games edition uh, for this, uh, they aren't the only publisher that is doing this. Um, Board and Dice is also sending, as I said in our last video, sending some games our way and to other retailers. So uh, really warms the heart and makes us uh, feel good about being in this industry right now that we're getting some support uh, when we do need it. And uh, so thank you very much to Check Games Edition for, for doing this. And let's go through this special box and see what they've sent. First up, there's Pictomania, okay, another Vlada Chavatil game, the designer of Codenames Through the Ages, and so many other awesome games. So this is a uh, drawing game. It's the drawing game with no teams and no waiting. Everyone gets to draw. Everyone gets to guess all at the same time. 
No one has time to draw a complex masterpiece. The player who can sketch the essence of a word with his few lines will have more time for figuring out what in the world the others are trying to draw. I have not played Pictomania yet, but uh, I'm told by many people that this is just an amazingly good game and uh, a little bit underappreciated, I think, um, in the world of games. Uh, and I'm looking forward to opening up this particular copy uh, for the cafe and giving it a try. Next up, Trap Words. Uh, this is another one that I have not played. We do actually have it in stock, but I didn't have my own copy yet. So now we will open up this one for the Board Game Cafe Library as well. Uh, you know the secret word your te teammates must guess. You're supposed to give clues, but the other team has created a list of trap words you can't say. You don't know what's on that list. Oh, and there's a time limit. Go! So there you go. You can see why this would be fun. Uh, you're trying to uh, give uh, clues that probably are off the beaten path because you expect the other team are going to put um, uh, a list of trap words that are the best words to use. So um, that is trap words. Well, how many players does that play up to? It says four to eight plus. So that's cool. So team game. Next up. Oh, hold on. Before I continue, here we are. There's some special stuff here. Uh, I'm going to read this out. Um, Hello, retail partners. We've been thinking about you all and hope you're staying safe and healthy. We know this is a difficult and unprecedented time in our industry and have been thinking ways we can show you our support. Every store situation is different and we wanted to provide relief regardless of the size of your store. We decided the most impactful thing we could do was to send you this box. Included are our most exciting party titles for you to use in any way you see fit. You know your store best and know what you need. We only want you to make good use of these games in the way that will help your store prosper. In addition to the games, we've included promotional items that you can uh, give away to your loyal customers who have stuck by you during these difficult times. Or use as prizes to give away through online contests or at a time when events are running again. Uh, just know we have not forgotten about you. We will be by your side when we come out the other side of this. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Justin or Tony. Hunker down, stay safe. We can't wait to see you when you can all get together again. Best wishes always. So here we, <clears throat> so here we have some promotional material they've sent as well. Okay, I'm not sure what game this is for. I haven't played it. Uh, sorry about that, but this is cool. Some additional, I guess, player sheets for some games that we would maybe run out of player sheets for. And, uh... Oh! Some special cards for code names. And... Oh, a number nine token for Letter Jam, the game right there that we'll talk about next. So you could make a nine-letter word instead of an eight-letter word. Uh, I think these are for Pictomania, is that? Looks like Pictomania, right? So there you go, some special Pictomania cards and uh, some special cards for code names. Very cool. So thank you very much. I got a little emotional there because this is uh, very appreciated. Okay, next up. Letter Jam, which is uh, a really, really innovative cooperative word game, which uh, we played a whole bunch over the Christmas holiday last year and really enjoyed. We played it at every single available player count, in fact, because we played it so much. We loved it that much. Uh, and the only player count that we didn't have the best time was six. It might have just been that particular group of people, though. It might I don't know if it was the game per se, but I can say even at two players, this game excels. Uh, in this game, you have one, uh, a bunch of letters. Everybody has a letter in front of them. The one that's in front of you, you can't see because the letter is facing everybody else. Uh, and somebody is going to uh, propose to make a word with a certain number of letters. And you're going to, uh, they're going to then put these poker chips, numbered poker chips next to the uh, letters in order. And you're trying to guess what your letter is. And so in this case, I'm going to guess my letter is a T because that would fit there. Although, you know what? It could be an F. 
Uh, so this is tricky. Sometimes uh, you need more than one round in order to make a uh, foolproof guess of your letter. And uh, we're, you're, it, it is a bit of a race and it's cooperative. And uh, this is a thinky cooperative word game, which I think is a really cool combination because most of the, uh, the word games are a bit lighter party type of games. This is not a party game. Uh, not to say it's not a lot of fun, but it's definitely a more cerebral experience. Uh, next up, we have Codenames Pictures. I'm not sure if we actually have Codenames Pictures for sale on the site right now. Um, but we do have a copy for our library, so I think we will sell this one. Thank you very much, uh, Check Games, for this. Uh, this is Light Codenames, where you're trying to give clues to uh, let your team guess as many of the uh, uh, options as available. You want a clue that covers multiple if you can. And instead of words, there are um, pictures in this game. Some people I know prefer codenames pictures, and some people I know prefer codenames with words. So there is a bit of uh, something for everybody with codenames, uh, with all the different editions that they have. Uh, next up, codenames, which I showed you we already had in stock. Uh, and we already have in the library, but maybe we'll just keep another copy for the library because I'm sure um, that this will be a game that multiple groups would want to play at the same time at our cafe. It's a really amazing game. This is the 2016 Spiel der Jahr, in fact. Definitely deserved that honor. Uh, an amazing, amazing word guessing game uh, for two teams. It says two to eight players, but you see the plus there because you can play uh, with any number of players as long as you split them into two teams. A game we've played so many times over the years. Next up, Codenames Duet, which I've only played once, uh, but is a two-player version of Codenames, and it's cooperative. And uh, it's uh, it's actually quite interesting. Okay, so you see this uh, the map that I pulled out of that uh, envelope is actually... Uh, more uh, more maps to play uh, this when I played we didn't use the map um, that might be I think that's an optional element in this game uh, I had a lot of fun playing this and maybe you and your partner will as well okay whoa this is crazy this is the first time I've seen this uh, oh my god this weighs a lot this is code names Double XL edition. Oh my goodness. Oh, and pictures. Is this? I don't even know. I know there's a double XL version of code names, but I didn't think it was even this big. Is this like a special version? Anyway, it's monstrous. I mean, look at this. It it makes those other games look tiny. These these are big games. These are big chonker games. This thing weighs like well over 10 pounds, maybe 15 pounds. That's incredible. So, uh, huh, not sure what to do with this, uh, but just gawk at it. It's incredible. There we are. That is the end of this uh, special unboxing video. We had a lot of exciting uh, new and restock games in this video. Personally, I'm most excited about Keyforge. You probably could tell during the video. I absolutely love Keyforge. It is one of my favorite card games of all time. Uh, I've been waiting for this for, oh geez, when did they announce it? September or November? Uh, so I've been waiting a long time for this. Really, really excited about that. Uh, we all had also a lot of really good restocks in this uh, games that people uh, have uh, shown um, are, are gonna sell well for us, which is really important. And also, you know, they're obviously that uh, selling well because they're really good games and we want to make sure that we have those really good games in stock for you. So when you come to meeples.ca, uh, you're not disappointed by seeing it out of stock. Now, if that ever does happen, you want a game, you don't see it because it's out of stock or maybe we just don't list it, please do email us at info at meeples.ca. We do a really good job, in my opinion, of getting uh, special orders to in to people right away. Uh, sometimes we can get things the next day, oftentimes two days. Worst case, it's usually about a week. That is if this, the game is in stock at the distributor. And if it's not in stock, we can back order it for you and have it in uh, right away as soon as it's um, uh, finally been restocked by the distributor. Something that we're doing a lot of and uh, more than we expected when we first opened, to be quite honest. But we're glad that we're able to 
uh, fill in the gaps with our inventory by doing that for people. Uh, and because we do ship with uh, FedEx from our distributors or Purolator, uh, we are able to get things shipped here quicker than you would be able to get them shipping Canada Post from the East Coast companies. Great companies, but right now uh, things are usually taking about two weeks to get from Toronto, which can be a bummer uh, when you're looking forward to playing a game. So uh, most times that uh, we special order something, we're able to get it in a week or less and uh, we'll be able to continue to do that. Uh, hopefully at some point Canada Post won't be as overloaded, uh, but until then uh, we're happy to uh, have that advantage uh, for everybody uh, in the west uh, coast of the country and uh, Western Canada be able to get them things really quickly. So I also wanted to give you an update on, on um, the renovations that are going on. So they started on Monday and uh, I had some fun uh, swinging a big sledgehammer this week and breaking walls and and uh, I even gave myself a bit of a fat lip. So you might have noticed that on the last video. I conked myself in the face, which was kind of funny. Uh, but uh, we're making really good progress. Uh, this space looks so much cooler now that uh, the walls are down on the east and west sides of the building. Uh, there's going to be way more room for everybody when we're done. Uh, I think it's going to look incredible. Um, our uh, construction partners have been doing a great, great work with us and we're uh, so excited to uh, get it all done and ready and uh, then get ourselves ready uh, to open the cafe for you and be able to serve you milkshakes and uh, offer our game library and all of that. Uh, so we'll keep you informed of how things are going as we go along. Uh, and so finally, the last thing, another uh, special thank you to Check Games uh, for that big box of games, including this insane edition of Codenames. Uh, I'm going to have to do some research because I didn't even know. I don't think this is the double XL version. It might be, but I mean, this is, this is incredible. It's huge. Uh, so that'll be quite something to see on the table. Um, I'm guessing that the cards are quite a bit, quite a bit bigger than normal. Uh, and we really appreciate it. I mean, you know, Czech Games didn't need to do that. Uh, there's a couple publishers have done stuff like this. Most haven't. Um, and uh, not that I expect any publisher to do this for us or for anybody else. And I know that they're suffering uh, as much as everyone else now. Board games have been selling fairly well uh, over the course of the pandemic. But um, still, there's a lot of impacts on everybody's lives and in the economy in general and a lot of uncertainty. Uh, so for a company to just uh, send, uh, you know, probably hundreds or thousands of retailers uh, boxes of free games is and pay for the shipping too. Uh, we didn't pay for the shipping. It's quite incredible. Something that I'll never forget. Uh, and I will always um, uh, make sure to support uh, games by Check Games Edition because I'll never forget uh, that support. So thank you very much to them. Also, thank you to you for watching this video. It means a lot uh, that you watch these videos, and uh, I love uh, getting feedback about the videos, so thank you. Uh, and uh, again, thanks for your patience in us getting the cafe open. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like on YouTube. That really helps us, as well as sharing it and subscribing to our channel. If you do subscribe to our channel, you want to hit the bell so that you get notified when new uh, videos like this come up so that you're aware of all the new and restocked games uh, that are happening at the store, meeples.ca. So thanks again very, very much for watching this uh, special video and have a great weekend. Bye.